Okay, we're on a pre-purchase timber report for this nice substantial um, mid-terrace property. Um, it's a pre-purchase report for a buyer who's had suspicions that arose um, on their initial um, evaluation report undertaken. Just showing you externally, we can see here the, the property has um, a lot of rooms with suspended timber construction on the ground floor. And we can see here just externally that the ventilation um, to those rooms or to those floors is less than adequate. Um, I'm just going to take you internally. Um, we're going to look into the front room. It's quite a nice room, quite a large floor area. Um, when looking around we can see, I've already inspected this floor by the way, when looking around we can actually see that there has been previous repairs. We've got six inch boards here marrying up to the four inch boards. That gives us an indication that these are previously being taken out. Uh, and we're going to find out as to what reason and why. Um, when we look at the floor, there's some unevenness underfoot and also springiness in the floor, suggesting that there also may be problems in the subfloor. I'm going to try and demonstrate this to you now. Uh, this is the floor area. Okay, and that's the rear recess at the back of the chimney. When I've removed a couple of floorboards here, just to have a look into the subfloor, uh, we can also see that there's new joists there, so the joists have been replaced, um, and we've also got membranes attached to the joist ends, so someone's had a little bit of knowledge um, of replacing floors, but not an awful lot, as we'll see in a second. Um, I'm not quite sure if you can see this. We'll try and get in there. And there we go. That is a lot of condensation on the underside of the 25 millimeter polystyrene blocks they've put in to insulate the floor. Um, obviously during the repair we suspect. Now I'm just going to drop down into the subfloor. We can see that there is no oversight on the floor. Uh, we've just got bare earth which is filled with rubble and debris, uh, decaying timber which is obviously and I'm going to take you into the subfloor, which is obviously um, evaporating moisture from within the ground. There we go, we can see uh, more condensation on the inside of the joists. Again, there we can see that the joists have previously been repaired, or replaced, sorry, um, and we've got uh, membranes wrapped over the joist ends, but they've not done anything to um, alleviate the cause of the problem. There's not been no additions to the subfloor ventilation, the joists aren't pre-treated. And if we look at the moisture content of the timbers, um, they're in excess of 22%, which is high. We can also see that the dividing sleeper walls, turn that off, that the dividing sleeper walls have no DPMs on them. So they've had the opportunity to put them in, but they haven't when they replace the floor. We turn around. We can see that we've got further problems. One second. You can see that we've got further problems to the joists that they've installed and we've got severe wet rot decay now starting to occur. There also appears to be a couple of original floor timbers left in place. Okay, I'm just going to come out of here. Okay, I'll take you into the dining room. We have uh, unfortunately, I can't get a full subfloor inspection in here. We also have similar problems. We can see that we've got replacement boards in some areas. We've got nail heads rusting um, from the replacement floor boards. And again, we've got very little ventilation to the dining room floor. So no through ventilation within the property. I mean, the kitchen, while this has got a tiled floor surface, some of the floor is actually suspended timber construction, um, which again has been replaced. Um, and the, we'll see the trimmers here beneath the staircase. Uh, they've got um, elevated moisture levels and we can also see here that we've also got infestation by the wood boring wheel. Uh, this is a pest which just infests moist and decaying timber. So there we know that the timber's got higher than acceptable moisture levels f due to its presence, okay? Um, I'm just gonna take you up onto the first floor. Okay, we can see we've got um, severe wet rot decay 
and infestation by the common furniture beetle and Nubian potatum and wood boring weevil um, Euphorium confani in the floor surfaces. Luckily, I managed to piece of the floorboard has broke away and there's no evidence to suggest that that spread into the structural floor timbers because we put a camera down there and had a look. Um, if we have a look at the um, panner on the WC, we can see that we've got lots of little fly tails here from the common furniture beetle. Um, looking around, we've got plenty of frass. Okay, also within the pan, we've got cobwebs, and then trapped within the cobwebs, we've got common furniture beetle carcasses and more frass. And we lift the lid up, and here we've got more frass from the infestation around the around the seat. Okay, and the frass is created during beetle emergence, so that's a good suggestion that we've had recent activity. Um, with it not being wiped away and also the presence of the carcasses we can see more flight holes there we go on the underside of the um, of the pan seat and more carcasses on the windowsill okay um, quite quite an interesting survey on this building um, very very important obviously for the uh, purchaser of the property to um, diagnose what problems are in existence um, and obviously evaluate the costs involved if they're looking at buying the property. 